Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I am your host, Harry Simu, and on this edition, uh, we'll be chatting about a couple of bits. We'll be talking about uh, Josh Kroenke's response to the We Care Do You campaign. We'll be talking about Unai Emery's latest comments regarding transfers, and I'll be telling you guys a little bit about the Sofa Sports Media Network. So lots to discuss on today's uh edition of the podcast of the show whatever you want to call it now i'm going to start off with uh, josh Cronkey's response uh, to the campaign that's been grabbing all the headlines uh, in the last couple of days lots of attention it is um close now the petition to a hundred thousand signatures unbelievable support um big thanks to every single person who's uh, taken part who's uh, offered something to the campaign who's signed it who's done whatever um i'm proud to say that i'm part of the guys uh, helping out in the background with this but um you know there are lots of people who have put loads and loads into this and uh, those are the guys that deserve of course all the credit uh, for what's happened so far now of course arsenal played the uh, colorado uh the rapids that's the one i always get stuck with these uh, american franchise names and i'm not going to call them football clubs because they're not their franchises uh it's very very different over there isn't it but let's um let's look at the uh, response that josh Cronkey put out now i'm not going to uh sit here and read through it because lots of people have done that you've all read it countless times there's no point in me just going through um, it word for word, but I'm just going to give you my thoughts on it. Now, I think that this was a very well structured, um, very well uh, presented piece of PR. And and that's all I think it is. I think that Josh Kroenke um, and anyone or pretty much anyone in that sort of uh, level of business uh, has a way of speaking, has a way with words, has a way of presenting things, has a way of coming across well. And this is nothing more than that, in my opinion. Now, what I will say is that Josh Gronke said all the right things, but it's about reading between the lines with something like this. Do you believe the things he is saying? And and that is something that you can't make a judgment on immediately. This is something that you need to wait and see what happens. He's put the marker down now. He said what he said. Um, he, he began, of course, by clarifying that his family owns Arsenal together uh, and that was immediately shutting down the people that you know are standing there going we want to hear from stan kse is is the company that owns the football club whether it's stan whether it's josh uh you know it doesn't really matter it's neither here nor there that's what josh is essentially saying in the beginning of his statement uh, he talks about the passion of the supporters um and then he talks about that crossroads comment now there was a comment in the initial statement uh, from the We Care Do You campaign, where they described the club as being at a crossroads. And, uh, you know, I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, but Josh Kroenke has addressed that point almost immediately in his open letter. And he says, over the past year, uh, we've turned the page from our traditional model of football operations, which included a manager and CEO, to a new chapter of Arsenal Football Club that is led by a head coach and managing director. Um, so it's clear that there has been a structural change. Now, the structural changes that they've put in in the past and the people they've hired in the past haven't proven to be successful. So that's why Arsenal fans are so, um, you know, pessimistic about this, are so pessimistic about this new regime. We've had a really frustrating summer so far. We hope there'll be some signings and Unai Emery's spoken about that today. So we'll come on to that shortly. But you can understand why people are feeling pessimistic Um regarding the structure but josh is right when he says that it has changed and since kse took full control of the club we have seen some changes so i suppose we have to give them some time uh, to embed this and we have to be a little bit patient but you know the reaction to this the negative reaction to this is purely down to the fact that we've sort of been fed this line uh, of course before now, he reiterates their desire to win, and that's why they're in sport, etc., etc. But what he doesn't do is he doesn't address most of the points that were raised in that statement. Now, I've got to be fair because there was a, an article that was published by uh, the Gooners podcast, great friends of ours out in the States, uh, where they uh, you know, they got to sit in a room with Josh Cronkey, a couple of journalists, um, 
and, and sort of Raul and Vinay and talk about this and talk about the, the protest, etc. And, you know, the response that they got and what they published was great, great work from them. But yeah, it doesn't address the points because let's be fair, it was a 15 minute interview during halftime. It would have been impossible for Josh to address all of those points. So I'm not really going to hold that uh, against them at this point. I I'd hope that there'll be further dialogue down the line where we will get answers um, concerning the rest of the points raised. But to expect that to be, um, you know, spoken about in the uh, initial interview would be a little bit ambitious in my opinion. So I uh, fully expected it to be brief and, and to the point. But the open letter could have been longer. Uh, I'm not saying that it should have been five, six pages long addressing every single point, but you hope that this is the start of the dialogue. And it's positive. You know, this petition has made a difference. It has brought the likes of Josh Kroenke to the table. It's opened the dialogue between the club and its supporters. So uh, you can only commend the work that's already been done. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my take on this. It's a good piece of PR. Um, he's addressed a couple of points. He's made some smart points. Um, but as always, actions speak louder than words, don't they? And at this moment in time, we have no evidence to suggest that uh, KSE are going to do the best for the club because they haven't done the best for our club in the past. They've been passive. That's how they've been described in the uh, campaign statement, etc. And I have to agree with that. So let's see how this develops. I suspect that this won't be the last communication between uh, the Arsenal fan groups and KSE. Well, I hope it's not the last communication. Um, and I hope that, you know, we will start to see some of this talk put into action in the coming weeks, particularly before the season starts. Fingers crossed we can get some deals over the line and lift the mood and the spirit amongst the fan base. But even if that was to happen, a lot of the concerns that have been raised in this campaign are long-standing concerns. This is not knee-jerk reaction. This is something that's been brewing for years and years and years. So, you know, whilst that might ease immediate concerns, it won't, you know, ease the the, the general feeling of, of bad blood towards KSE. So let's see how that goes. But stay tuned for more on that. And we'll be bringing you updates on that, of course, as that story develops. In Josh's uh, interview, which he gave to Arsenal Media, he spoke about the fact that we should be excited for, uh, you know, what's to come in this transfer window. Excited. Is he having a laugh? They've been driving us bloody crazy all through the summer. We're going to sign this player. We're going to sign that player. No, we're not going to sign him. Yes, we are going to sign him. No, we can't afford him. Let's move on to someone cheaper. It's been really stressful. And I guess most people would look at me now and say, well, you shouldn't believe everything you read in the tabloids and I completely agree with that but it's very hard isn't it during a summer when there's not much action and your team's not in action whatsoever to not get drawn into these rumors to not get drawn into the transfer talk um, but Unai Emery was speaking ahead of the Bayern Munich game uh, out in the States and he was asked by Football.London whether he shared Kroenke's excitement over the market and he said Yes, we are speaking about big players because we are starting to think about our team and squad now. We have very good players, very young players who can progress. Other players can come here to help us. We need players with big performances. Our target is to get three or four players who really improve our squad now. Three or four players now. That's what Unai Emery said. He said we are being very, very demanding. And first, speaking about the possibility to sign very expensive players. The first player in our list is our first target. If we cannot achieve that, the second. So Unai Emery sort of lifting the lid there on what Arsenal are trying to do this summer. Now, a part of me does wonder whether he's only said this because of the pressure that's been applied on KSE at the moment. Has he been instructed to go along with the narrative that we should be excited for this transfer window? You could argue that if he was to say something like that and it wasn't to happen, we, he'd look stupid, the club would look stupid, and it would increase pressure, and I get that. But it feels to me like the timing of this is all too convenient. So let's see, of course, what is going to happen. We continue to be linked with the likes of Danny Sabalos, for example, from Real Madrid. Uh, Unai Emery was asked about him, and he said he doesn't want to talk about individuals, but he did say that Sabalos is a good player. So uh, make of that what you will. Now... 
I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about Unai Emery's recent comments in the uh, comment section below. Of course, hit the like button, subscribe button too whilst you're there. And that little bell icon as well. And that way you will never miss an upload. If you are, of course, a YouTube subscriber. If you're not and you're listening via the audio, leave us a review. And subscribe via whichever platform it is that you listen to us from. Uh, we are truly grateful for all of your support. Now, just finally, I'd like to bring to your attention uh, some news, uh, some personal news, uh, which I tweeted out about last night. And I'm sure uh, some of you would have seen it on my Twitter feed. Now, as you probably would have realized in the description of the Chronicles of Aguna for quite some time now, uh, we've been putting in there. It's a Sofa Sports Media production. Sofa Sports Media was initially the Sofa Sports Podcast, which was a podcast that me and some friends uh, set up a couple of years back, um, talking about all things football, general football, mainly the Premier League. Um, and as time went on, it developed really well, and we ended up uh, getting a whole host of ex-footballers on there. Um, we spoke to ex-Premier League referees regularly. We spoke to some of the game's top broadcasters, Martin Tyler. You've, you may have seen that one posted on this channel too. Uh, Sam Matterface more recently of TalkSport and ITV. Um, so yeah, it was a podcast that was doing really, really well. We got to the FBAs in 2018. We were one of the finalists uh, in the category of best football podcast. Uh, but due to work commitments and stuff, we've sort of been unable uh, to keep the gang together, to keep producing regular podcasts. So what we've done is we've decided that after lots of planning, lots of discussions, and when I say planning, I mean planning for a good year or so, we finally launched Sofa Sports Media as an actual media company, meaning we're going to have accreditations. We're going to be providing you with content um covering lots of different aspects of the beautiful game we've got the chronicles of aguna underneath our umbrella we've got simply Serie A, which is an italian football based show we're going to be bringing you a premier league show uh, in the new season so lots and lots of content coming we're also in discussion with various other podcasts about getting them under the sofa sports media umbrella if you've got a podcast and you're interested hit me up dm me whatever you want to do because we can offer you uh, lots at the moment we can offer you guests we can offer you accreditations and uh, hopefully help in promotion and various other bits and pieces so really proud to announce that sofa sports media is up and running and stay tuned because there's going to be lots and lots and lots of content coming your way in the new season we do have a youtube channel just type in sofa sports media you'll find it you can also follow us on twitter at sofa sports media um yeah, really proud to have set up our own company from something that started off as a hobby uh, amongst friends. And, and, you know, to get to this point and to be working in football full time, I am absolutely thrilled. And I want to thank every single one of you, because without you guys tuning in weekly, without you guys listening to the various podcasts, etc., etc., and giving me the opportunity to speak on uh, national radio, on TV, etc., I wouldn't be in this position. So it's all down to you guys. Thank you very much for your continued support and stay tuned for updates regarding Sofa Sports Media. I'll be back tomorrow with another video, and I always say this, unless uh, some huge uh, news breaks in the, the next few hours. But uh, as it stands, I'll be getting an early night because we have got a 4 a.m. game with Bayern Munich uh, tomorrow morning, which I'm covering for Vavil, so I will uh, have to be up and have to be ready uh, to concentrate on that one by 4am. Until then guys, take care and uh, we'll speak soon. All the best.